witness to that. We saw growth disappear instantly. We saw tumor disappear. A lady couldn't menstruate for a long time until she used pills. And the pills were too expensive. She stopped taking the pills, so her menses stopped. In Cagayandiaro, she got healed and four long disappeared from her neck region. And you know, she went back to the pastor and they had church from 1 a.m. in the morning till the following day. They couldn't sleep because of the mighty works of God. Amen. So I want you to know that this is not just one of those uh, conferences. You were in for an impartation. I believe that you will leave this conference with such fire that the enemy that have been running after you, you will begin to run after that enemy. I believe that. You are going to begin to run after the enemy that have been running after you that unfortunately you have been running away from. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we stand to our feet? Father in heaven, how we love you. We literally know the end. May your kingdom be established in our presence. As your people, we
for increasing glory in this conference. We pray for the surpassing greatness of the Lord. That we will go from glory to glory. Let there be impartation. Let there be release of spiritual gifts. Let there be breakthrough. Let there be release of grace. Let there be release of anointing. Anoint the refresh of you. That we will go back to our different station and do exploit for our God. Let there be unusual healing and miracles in this conference. Let there be mighty testimonies. The mountains that have stood against your people. Father, we have come together as a church to command the mountain to be removed and to be cast into the sea. That your people will go forward, that they 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 will go forward, they will possess the land, they will possess the land, they will do great things for God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Mother God. We decrease that you will increase. <laughs> Take the glory in Jesus' name. Take your seat. As a leaf, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Mm. But as truly as a leaf, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Listen to me. One of the things God will do in this conference is He will take away shames from His people. God will take away shame from his people. Because God wants our life to reflect his glory. Amen. God wants people to see his glory in our lives. God wants people to see his glory in our ministry. I speak to somebody here. I don't know what you're going through that has caused you shame and embarrassment. But the power of the Holy Spirit is going to fix that situation. The power of God is going to take care of that condition. God is going to turn around that situation. And you will have a testimony that will make you glad. In the name of Jesus. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory. And my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened unto my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. Look at verse 24. But my servant coming. Do we have the servants of the Lord in this place? Amen. If you're a servant of the Lord, just wave at me like this. Say, servant of the Lord. Just wave at me. So I'm preaching to the right people. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land where into he went and his seed shall possess it. Tonight, I want to speak on the topic another spirit. Another spirit. Another spirit. I'm sure you're familiar with the story in chapter 13. How the children of Israel came to the border where they should have crossed to possess the land. And instead of going in, they decided, they said to Moses, send 12 of our leaders. Each leader representing a tribe. And spy the land. And the Bible says, and they were sent the wind and spied the land. And they came back. When they came back, they came with grapes. They came with some fruits. And I'm sure you know the story. How they say this fruit is from the land. But however, we are not able to possess the land. Because there are giants in the land. And the Bible says there was 
two out of the twelve leaders, Caleb and Joshua. When you read verse 30 of Numbers chapter 30, and Caleb steal the people before Moses and said, Let us go at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Oh Lord. Ayah kaparis so sandal. Lingros kisa paralita. Joshua and Caleb. They had another spirit. They had an excellent spirit. They said, Shh, shut up. Be still. Man, we are able to go and possess the land and to overcome. And you know something? The Bible says, and the man spoke of stoning Joshua and Caleb. They spread evil reports. They spread evil report, And the Bible says it brought fear and discouragement to God's people. Listen to me. You leaders, be careful what you say with your mouth. You can destroy what God has used you to build in many years in just one day because of what you say. Particularly when things are not working fine. Be careful what you say. They even brought some fruit from the land. I mean that should have been enough encouragement. But did you know they closed their eyes and refused to see the fruit? And they said, we are finished. We can't take that land. And they spread evil report. Be careful what you say when you're going through crisis in your ministry. Do you know what? I've not seen one pastor who never went through crisis in his life. I've not seen one church that never went through crisis. Not seen one. Including the one Jesus pastor when he was here on earth. The Bible says they finished a meeting and Jesus said to the disciples, let us go over to the other side. And they entered the boat and as they were going there arose a great storm against the boat. It was so bad that some water was entering the place. But do you know what Jesus did? He slept. He didn't say anything. Because whatever you say when you're going through storms is very important. You think you have a problem in your ministry and you feel like giving up. Brother, don't give up! God called you. God anointed you. His hand is upon your life. He gave you that ministry. It is his ministry. fail is if we are building our ministry but if you are building the church of Jesus Christ I don't care how many demons come up I don't care who fights you I don't care the crisis Jesus is Lord Amen. he slept he didn't say anything what does that mean he rested in the one who promised him that he would die on the cross. God didn't say Jesus would die on the sea. That's why he slept. Do you have a prophetic word from God? Do you have a vision from God? Do you have a dream? Do you have a revelation? And right now, it's like things are not working. And you're beginning to shake like Shakespeare. Stop shaking. Rest! And then Peter went to him and said, Master, can I know that we perish? And he woke up. What did he say? Peace be still. I speak to every pastor whose, whose ministry is going through storms right now. I speak to every pastor whose family is going through storms like that. Peace be still. I prophesy the peace of God upon your ministry. I prophesy the peace of God upon your family, upon your wife, upon your husband, upon your children.
please give me some more, some more, some more volume here. Because we have many days to do this thing. Peace be still. Oh my goodness. And the Bible says the ten leaders spread evil reports. When you read verse 16, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had set unto the children of Israel. Say, the land through which we have gone to search, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we, and we were in our own side as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sides. They spread evil report. Please lead us. Be careful what you say. With your mouth. Do you know sometimes two of your church members or three can have problems. And one of them come to tell you about the other ones. Be careful how you answer. Because what you answer, the person might take it back to the other ones. You know in the church, they have a way of having network. <laughs> Network. You never can tell the person coming to tell you about the other person if he belongs to their network in the same church. And if you think because he's been giving you tight, big tight, or he's been so faithful serving, and you want to stand by him or her and speak against others, as soon as he leaves there or she leaves, goes to the other ones and says, Even Pastor, this is what Pastor said about what you did. And do you know what will be the real problem? What you just said will be what will be the real problem. Yes. Because the other two will be so disappointed that you responded and reacted that way. My dear brothers and sisters, don't speak your fear. Speak the word of God. traveling on the high sea and there was a lot of raging there was a lot of storms and the sea was threatened I mean the ship was threatened but the angel of the Lord had appeared to, to Paul you know what Paul did Paul got up in the midst of the storms and told them ladies and gentlemen I wanted to calm down because the angel of the Lord of whose I am of whom I said appeared to me last night and he promised me that no life shall be lost yes. get some food and eat for I know it shall be as he had told me <laughs> he said, I know God will make it happen because he said it yes. you didn't call yourself the Bible says, no man taketh this honor unto himself, except he be called, like Aaron and his sons were called. The Bible says, no man goes to war at his own expense. I want us to know that what we are doing is not a man, it is of God. Amen. I want you to know your headquarters is in heaven. <laughs> I want you to know your boss is in heaven. His name is the El Shaddai God. The one that is never lacking in anything. The one, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the one that is the creator of heaven and earth. The Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness of yes. If a man can pay his staff very well, how about God? If you do your work well, he can pay you. Better than a man can pay you. The Bible says when they spread the evil report, the children of Israel became afraid and they were discouraged. They were discouraged. Do you know, leaders, whatever happens to your church <laughs> is determined by the use of your mouth. <laughs> 
Do you know what you never teach your people, they will never do, they will never become. Do you know that? If you keep teaching your people prosperity, they will so prosper and they may end up in hell. Except you balance it with holiness and righteousness and the fear of God. By my experience, in the years I've been in ministry, whatever you teach your people and keep emphasizing, they will begin to do and they will become. That shows you how powerful your tongue and your mouth is. And when I talk about leaders, I'm not only talking about the pastors. How about you, the youth leader? How about you, the women leader? How about you, the elder? How about you, the, 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 the children church leader? How about you in charge of the greatest unit? Whatever leader or leadership you found yourself, you are very important in the program of God. Amen. Be careful what you say with your mouth. Be careful how you answer in every matter. in every situation because people with excellent spirit they learn to talk right they learn to talk the word of god they learn to talk their prophecy they learn to talk their dream they learn to talk their vision they learn to talk what god revealed to them what god showed to them not what they are going through and god was so angry and God decided that none of them will enter the promised land except Joshua and Caleb. And their children who didn't know they are left from their right. And the Bible says, because Joshua, I mean Caleb had another spirit. You see, when you have another spirit, the way you talk will be different. Yes. In, in the NIV, New International Version, it says a different spirit. You see, when you have this spirit, you'll be different. Sometimes you will take steps that people look at you and say, man, are you crazy? Yeah. And some of you have not been able to do great things for God because you are waiting until everything is available before you will move. Listen to me. Everything will never be available. God is not looking for your ability. God is looking for your availability. When God finds your availability, he will he will bring his ability. He will bring his power. He will bring the connection. He will bring the money. Am I talking to somebody here? I pray that at the end of this conference, you will be scared in your spirit. You will be scared of in your faith. You will begin to step out. You will begin to do great things for God. He had another spirit. He had a different spirit. A different behavior. He had a different attitude. What makes others cry? He just laughs. Some of you need to learn to laugh at your enemy. Because nothing annoys your enemy like laughing at him. When he thinks you should have, you know, a vigil crying over the situation, you are just laughing. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a symbol of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the evil men shall rise up to eat up my flesh, they shall stumble and they shall fall. Bible says, faithful is he that called you, who will also do it. Amen. Another spirit. See, people with another spirit, the way they talk is amazing. Sometimes they behave in a way you look at them and you ask them, are you sick? See, when you have another spirit, you don't walk with your senses. Because in the school of the supernatural, the senses are not needed. You want to see the supernatural? You want to see God move and do great things in your ministry and do your ministry? Leave your senses alone. Connect to God by your heart. The Bible says we walk not by sight, but by faith. Stop trying to figure out how it's going to be. Stop being reasonable. God doesn't 
doesn't use reasonable men. He uses unreasonable men. Yes. Who just say, yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Your strength is made perfect in my weakness. Because if God was to use reasonable men, he would have called only professors. But the Bible says God chooses the foolish things to confound the wise. God chooses the weak things to confound the what? The strong. The things that are despised are the ones God decides to use. My goodness. He had another spirit. He saw no giant. He saw no mountain. You see, that tells you there are two classes of people in the world. There are those who see giants and mountains, but there are those who see fruit. It depends on what you want to see. You are seeing enemies run about. I don't see enemies run about. You know what I see? <laughs> the Bible says the angel of the Lord in camp. surrounds his people. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Elisha said to his servant, they are dead that are for us and more than they that are against us. If God be for you, who can be against you? Do you believe this is the word of God? I'm here to destroy your fear. I'm here to destroy your discouragement. I'm here to let you know that the mountains are nothing to our God. I'm here to let you know that the sickness is nothing to God. I'm here to let you know that your giant is nothing to God. Because we serve the Almighty God. It is an Elohim. It is an Adonai. It is an El Shaddai. It is an Alpha. It is an Omega. It is the beginning. It is the end. His name is Jehovah. The I am that I am. When he moves, nothing can stop him. When he speaks, I'm telling you, you will leave this conference feeling so great. You will leave here and feeling so great. And your enemy will be so small. Your problem will be so small. It shall become so insignificant because your God is alive. Somebody shout out. see no giant. Some of you, your giant is money. Some of you, your giant is mountain. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. You will never have until you step out. Because provision looks for vision. Provision looks for vision that is on a mission. And if you have a vision that is sleeping, provision will run away from it. Some of you, you have great vision, bigger than the whole of Philippines. And you have not done just one percent of it because you are waiting until everything is in place. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter eleven, "He that observes the wind will never sow." And if you don't sow, you don't have this. Oh my God. Another spirit. You know, I was just studying my Bible. And I went to John chapter 14, verse 16. Jesus said, And I will give you another comforter. Yes. Hey! Yeah. I will give you another comforter. He said, I will not leave you like orphans. I will give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, amen. Another comforter. And do you know what that is in Greek? That word another comforter means allos, paracletos. That means another of the same kind. He said, I will give you another comforter. In other words, I will give you allos, paracletos. 
me another exactly like me because when he was telling them I've got to die they, they fell back they fell they're gonna be lonely and abandoned and left to the you know Roman soldiers and the rest and Jesus said no 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 what I'm about to do is even greater than what is happening right now. Because right now, you only have the Holy Spirit upon you. But the one I'm going to give that is exactly like me, he will dwell in you. He will live with you. He will walk with you. He will guide you. He will empower you. He will strengthen you. He will lead you. He will help you. Yeah. I will give to you a lost paracletus. <laughs> And Nova exactly like me. And Nova completely, totally like me. And the Bible says, and Caleb had and Nova spirit. So what made Caleb to behave different? Another spirit. The Holy Spirit. You see, I don't understand how you can have the Holy Spirit. You have the anointing of God. And all you're talking about is failure. All you talk about is sickness. All you talk about is problem. All you talk about is I'm about to die. I'm about to I'm about. The Holy Spirit in you? Come on. Yeah. You have the Holy Ghost. I mean, Joshua and Caleb had the Holy Spirit only upon them. But you have the Holy Ghost resident in you. And all you are seeing is giant. There's something wrong with your eyes. Tonight God will slap that eyes. And I'm telling you, you will see clearly. You will see better. Because you can have the Holy Ghost live inside of you. And all you see is a giant. All you see is mountain. All you see is sickness. No, no, no. I don't see giant. I don't see mountain. I don't see no devil. I see angels. I see a way where there is no way. I see prosperity. sickness kill you come on man you have the Holy Spirit and you say the devil is after you do you know there are people the devil is after but some of us are after the devil <laughs> You have another spirit. You have a lost paracletus. The one that came upon Samson. Ah. And with the trouble of an ass. Hey. <laughs> I don't know if we know what we have. Just the trouble of an animal. He killed 1,000. So if he had a microphone like this, he would have killed 10,000. <laughs> and you have microphone, you have Bible, you have good shoes, you have good dictionary, you have different translations, you even have laptop. <laughs> and you are doing nothing. You have internet. He had another spirit. He spoke differently. Yes. He spoke differently. He behaved differently. That is an excellent spirit at work. He think differently. He reasoned differently. According to the word of God, not according to your situation. I shared this testimony last time. I don't know if some of you, some of you were not, is some of, of course, some of you were not here to hear that. How Barnabas and I left our home and got to the airport without complete ticket money. Yes, last time we came here, you remember we told you that. I called a ticket agent, 
the ticket was prepared and I said to the agent bring it to the airport and we didn't have complete money but we had another spirit <laughs> I'm telling you, if you wait until everything is in place, you will be out of place. If you wait until everything is in place, you will be out of place because everything will never be in place. When you read about Hebrews chapter 11, the book of champions, did the Bible tell you how much money they have? No. It told you men who did incredible things by faith in God. Yes. And you know we were there. The morning before we left to the airport, he got complete money. I was in the airport, my money was not complete. So we told the ticket man, stand on the line for us. Keep moving the line, the check-in line. Let us count the money. I'm telling the truth by God, the line up. And so Barnabas began to count this money. And when I saw that his money was complete, he had extra. I said, praise God, you are the man God wants to use to complete my money. Give it to me now. Lose that money and let it come to Emmanuel in the name of Jesus. And so I, I took it from him and I added and counted my home was complete. And then we called the agent man and said, come now, give us ticket, take your money. He didn't even know that while we were still counting the money, we were still waiting for the miracle to be completed. But I'm telling you, God never comes late. He is right on time. Even if it is one second, God will show up for you, my brother. He will show up. He will show up. You can't do ministry without faith, I'm telling you. We were in Iloilo and people were disturbing this young man, beautiful, handsome man, after me. <laughs> this man, he will say, oh, you are handsome, but after me. <laughs> so today I got you, you are handsome, but after me. <laughs> and you know, some pastors gathered to discourage him. They say, how much money did they bring? They think we are Americans. Because Americans come and bring money. We are not Americans, we are Africans. We bring the gospel. We bring the fire of God. I can give you any money that you need. Because the anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing lifts your burden from shoulder. The anointing is a way maker. Praise God for those who come with money and the gospel. But we came with the gospel. And some of you have been spoiled because you have people who come here bringing money. So every time there is a missionary, all you're looking for first is money. Yeah. One thing that will remain, which is the most important, is the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. They try to discourage him. But you know that in the same Iloilo, we did conference without money at the beginning. But at the end, there was so much money. We paid the bills and we had something to take back home. Because the laborer deserves a wage. Yeah. <laughs> and some people were asking, those people that are coming, how much money are they bringing? Come on, servant of God. I mean, you have become that color. That when you see missionaries and prophets coming from different nations, evangelists, all you are asking for first is money. Why is it that you started in the spirit and you are now in the flesh? Who has bewitched you? And you don't even know you are backslided. You think you are still in the ministry. You don't know you have been, you have been picked over by the God of money. Because every time they call a committee meeting, that there is somebody coming to town with the word of God. You are asking, how much money do they have to give? Are you Judas? <laughs> be careful. Three things we all must be careful about. Money, sex, and pride. Read history. One of these slick great men. Read history. You have a los paracletos. And you are confused. That's why 
we need this fresh oil because your strength is going to be renewed because you are you are spiritual which was your greatest strength in ministry some of you have stopped dreaming dreams some of you you have left your greatest strength in ministry but I see God in this stretch oil in this house conference bring a restoration bring a renewal I see times of refreshing come from above upon his servants in the name of Jesus He had another spirit. Spirit that sees possibilities. A spirit that sees a way even when there is no way. Look at what Caleb said. This is where I'm going to close. Because today is just an introduction. Look at what Caleb said. Ooh, I'm telling you, you are in for a Holy Ghost flight. These three days. <laughs> If you know any pastor anywhere, tell the person it's happening here. Because something is going to happen to your life. Yes. I tell you by God. Look at what Joshua said. Caleb said. Hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at Numbers 14, verse 6 to verse 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen to me. Don't get afraid when people leave your church. You know, that's one of the greatest things the enemy is using to keep pastors hypertension and stroke and arthritis and arthritis and all the teeth and migraine. Because people leave your church. Listen to me. People left the church of Jesus. Yes. A church that had <laughs> 5,000 men and then had 12 leaders, minus the children and the women, which is usually more than the men. So if men were 5,000 who had the miracle of bread and fishes. Consider the women. So women and children plus or minus should be 10,000. All together, 15,000 plus 12 disciples. How many? 15,012. But you know something? In just one service on a Sunday morning, I am the bread of life. Except you eat in my, of my flesh and drink of my blood. You have no portion of me. This guy is a murderer. <laughs> Flesh! Blood! I'm gone. They left in their thousands. And Jesus was left with only twelve. What did he do? He didn't sin. Some of you pastors think when people leave your church you have sinned. You are more righteous than righteous. There's nothing wrong with you. As a matter of fact, it's normal for people to join church and leave. Do you know people come to your church for a season? There are no permanent members. Oh, you don't like this. Listen, there are no permanent members of any church. They are only permanent members of the body of Christ. So if you have been church sick, you are going to be healed in this conference. In fact, if people don't leave your church, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> they left only 12. We left. And Jesus said, are you also going to go? Peter said, Master, where do we go? For you have the word of life. Yeah. 
See, we are stuck here. We have found a resting place. And unfortunately, also, they are members of the body of Christ who are skating rollers. They just keep moving. They just keep moving. I feel sorry for them. Because you can't keep hopping from one place to the other and be, and be plant, and, and grow. You can't grow as a Christian hopping from here to there. You are only permitted to leave one church when God has spoken to you to leave. Yes. You don't leave because there's crisis. You don't leave because there's storms. Otherwise, you carry it forward to the next church. Carry over. And we have people who have a calling of jumping from one church to the other. It's a calling. It's very serious now. It's a calling. They just come to check out. I feel sorry for them because there's no one perfect pastor or one perfect church anywhere in the world. The day you find one, you will make it imperfect because you are yourself, you're not perfect. The church is not for perfect people. The church is for perfecting the saints. According to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11. For the perfecting of the saints. That they may do the work of ministry. So pastor, if people have left your church, don't feel bad. They left the church of Jesus. Have you not read? Luke was, I mean, Paul was abandoned when he needed people most. They must left him and went, and went for something else. When he needed people to speak for him. At the court, nobody showed up. But in the midst of that, Timothy was there. Titus was there. Luke was there. God knows how to comfort his servants. God will never leave us without help. You know what? When people have finished their assignment in your church, sometimes God moves them out. And if you fight to keep them, they can destroy what they raise. Some people are like sca scaffold. Helping for the building to rise. And when the building has risen, they are out of place. So you need to know those that are scaffold. You need to know those that are pillars. Don't try to make a scaffold a pillar. Yeah. Yes. Don't try to make a scaffold a roof. When people come to your church, ask God, why has this person come? Particularly those who give big tithes yeah. and speak big grammar. Particularly those who have a lot of ge geological certificates. Very big one. So you don't get sick and die before your time. God is with you. God that called you is with you. He will help you. You will not fail. If you stay focused. Yes. David said when I lift up my eyes. Look at that. Listen to me. Pastors, stop trusting members. If you want to live long, stop trusting members. Do you know the Bible says in Jeremiah, cross me the man that put his trust in man? Have you read that scripture before? Yes. Have you read that scripture before? Yes. Cross me the man that puts his trust in man. David saw it all, including betrayal and disloyalty from his own children. And his closest friend, Ahitophel. And then David said, when I lift up my eyes and look at the hills, from whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. You know what? If you want to last in ministry and don't die before your time, when people come, celebrate them. While they are there, celebrate them. But when they want to go, celebrate them. If you get a word from the Lord that it's not time to go, they insist going. Celebrate them. Make sure your heart knows no bitterness. When bitterness enters your heart, according to Hebrews chapter 12, you lose the grace of God. Bible says, be careful that no root of bitterness grows up in you. That you lose not the grace of God.
One of the things is that will happen in this conference is God will heal our hearts. God will heal our hearts, the hurts in the hearts. You know, sometimes some pastors get so offended, get so wounded that you decide not to forgive. Ah, uh, why should you lose everything? You lose the tight, lose the vow, lose the member, lose his friends, and you lose your eternal life. <laughs> Because if you drop dead or the trumpet sound, you won't go to heaven. And when you go, God said, why after all these years? He said, God, it was because, can you imagine, he took the title away, took the vow, took the son, took the daughters, took the friend, in fact, took the house, took the car. So I was very angry and he said, I won't forgive. He said, did you die for the person? Did you die for anybody? You must choose to stay happy. Amen. You must choose to keep your peace. Choose to keep your job despite whatever you're going through in ministry. That is an excellent spirit, excellent attitude, excellent behavior. Because I tell you that God will help you to build that church to that level. If the enemy decides to use anybody to bring it down, God can use you to build even greater. Amen. You know something? If somebody who lets you, by God's program, ought to still be with you, let him or her go, he will come back. Because the truth is, they won't find peace anywhere else except they return to you. The Bible says it's not him that we let nor run it. But it is God that showeth mercy. Do you know there is a God who is behind everything pulling the strings? Oh Lord, look at look at look at, look at Numbers 40 from verse 6. And Joshua the son of Noah and Caleb the son of Jephaniah, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake upon and they speak unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. They didn't talk about giants and anakites and the kites. They didn't talk about mountains. They choose to talk about the milk and the honey. They choose to talk about the lapu lapu and the tilapia and the buku and the book of they decided to see something good. Yeah. Look at verse 9. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Hey. Yes. That's where I want One to one man said they are bread. <laughs> look, no, everybody, look at it. It's in your Bible. It's not in Emmanuel's Bible. It's in our Bible. Look at it. It says, And only rebel ye not against the Lord, neither fear you the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not!
Saliba can finish bread. <laughs> bread. 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 Kuskas is the kapuskas. Bread. Oh God. Where did they get this kind of spirit? And then the Holy Ghost didn't even live inside of them. Allos Paracletus was upon. Allos Paracletus was not inside. And here you are seated. You have Allos Paracletus. You have the Holy Ghost living inside of you. And you are seeing giant. You are seeing mountain. Come on. Arise and shine. For your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Do darkness cover the earth. Close darkness up. Yes. Your God has risen upon you. No husband to marry is bread. <laughs> Some of you ladies in ministry, you are problem is that nobody to marry. Richard, I didn't point finger. I only spoke by the spirit. to put some things in place. Yes. Sometimes I wish I was not married. You think it's easy to crisscross nations, leaving two children, young, and a wife behind? Sometimes I wish I was not married because that takes away that stress from me. But I'm glad I'm married because I have somebody to return home to who can welcome me. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. It is nothing but bread. How many of you like bread? How many of you know bread? Bread. Pastor, God says I should tell you that problem is bread. You are getting ready to eat that problem. You will, you will hold that problem. You will squeeze it like this. That problem is going to melt. That problem will be solved. My servant, Zerubbabel. And he said, it's not by power, it's not by man. In other words, he's telling Zerubbabel, it's not going to be by your strength. It's going to be by my spirit. When you have this another spirit, when you have this excellent spirit, when you have this Allos Paracletus, listen to me, your problem becomes a brain. You just eat up everything that was trying to eat you up. You just find that as you're going by faith to do the things God called you, all the mountains will be out of the way. All the valley will be raised. All the crooked path will be made straight. That's the word of the Lord. That every mountain shall be leveled. Every valley shall be raised. Every crooked path shall be made straight. Every rough place shall be made smooth. And it says, and the glory of the Lord shall be
Greg. Oh, Jesus. I can't recover from that revelation. Bread? No. That is, these guys messed up the devil so bad. They didn't even reduce him to a robber, but they reduced him to a bread. Bro, you see that? They messed up the devil so bad. They made him so ashamed. They didn't even consider him to make the problem a robber, but they made it a bread. See, the giants are nothing but bread. The Anakites are nothing but bread. The mountains are nothing but bread. Our God is with us. We don't have to be afraid. Let's go and take the land. Listen to me. Do you know what God was saying? You have talked for a long time now. Stop talking alone. Begin to take action. You have dreamed enough. Some of you, your dreams are so big that if, if I'm telling you, some of you, your dreams are about to break your neck. Because you just keep dreaming. Why don't you close your eyes and open? You are dreaming. It's time to begin to act some of the dreams. It's time to begin to make sure that what is in the heart gets to the paper. And what is in the paper, you can transfer it into land. Let it be something somebody can see. Because until you begin to do that, you wouldn't know how much God can use you. You wouldn't know how much God is with you. You don't know. You wouldn't know the resources of God. You wouldn't know the power of God. You would not know the provisions of God. Bread, come on. Bread. No, oh, this is this is terrible for the devil. Lift up your hand, everybody, just speak in the tongues. Just speak in tongues. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Shabroska Tatarika Soka.
Oh 
using your voice you'll lose it yes a big war going on here and even worshiping even speaking loudly would bring a lot of pain yes and a lot of constraint That's right. it's God hallelujah we thank God I need an usher to stand my hand to speak yes stand right here Father I thank you let this miracle be permanent by the power of the Holy Ghost Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yes. yes, brother. God bless you. What has the Lord done for you? Um, just this, this afternoon, I had headache, several headache, I guess. So I I made it to the Lord this afternoon. What is really want Him to tell me about these things? And just this time when we worship the Lord, just recently, I healed totally healed the headache. The pain is disappeared. Yes, How about we thank you? Shoprasky, are you ready for this? Hallelujah. Take it. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Yes. What did God do for you? you? Know how you hang around fire? If we take my fever. You had fever. Yeah. For how long? I. Uh, it was started last week. And you came in here with the pain. Yeah. Right now. It's gone. It's gone. Come and put your hand together for the Lord. Never will really he come back again. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Lorenza, God bless you. What did the Lord do for you tonight? This night, God helped me. I have my cough. And Wait a minute. Where do you people take all these things? You have your cough. It was a personal property. Don't you ever say you have any sickness. What you have is a possession. I just told you tonight, excellent spirit talks right. Excellent spirit talks very. These mountains are nothing but pray. That's how excellent spirit talks. When you have a attack of sickness, you don't say you have sickness. You say, that I feel this or that or the enemy attack me with this. You don't say you have because what you have is a property. Yeah. Yeah. So can you speak again as an excellent woman? Thanks God that uh, God uh, totally helped me that. Of what? Of my... Uh, of... Yeah. Of cough. How long? Uh, one week. One week. It is not yours. It belongs to the devil and there it goes. Yeah, I am healed by his stripes. I am healed. What could you not do? Pardon? What could you not do because of the kidney problem? You couldn't bend or what could you not do? You couldn't jump? Cannot work. You cannot walk. Yeah, I have to rest. So when you came today, you found it difficult to walk? Yes. For well, how long was this, was this problem? Mm, almost a month. Almost a month. Yes. But now you can walk. Yes, I can. And you walk, go there and come back. Even try to run. Run. Yes. Go there and then come this way. Can you run back this way? God bless you. Come and put your hand together for the Lord. I will let the kidney problem be over. It's a prayer. This precious sister from Himalala. It was in their church last year that the boy that died came back to life. Is that boy and mother? They still coming to church? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. So what did the Lord do for you tonight? Uh, the doctor declared me that I have a cancer. I went to Manila, but they told me that I have small cancer disease, and it is also a cancer. But by the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am healed. I'm telling to the members of the church, I'm going to the church, that I'm healed. So how, how did 
did you know that you were here? Did you right. feel yeah. any heat, anything touch you there, or was there anything that is disappeared now? Yeah, there is a small seed, but the doctor told me that it is a cancer, but so tonight, uh, have you checked it? It's, it's no more, or you, the pain is no more. No. How did you know that you're here? Here, there is a big light, but I thought I know that this is only uh, I know. So has is this is this still there? Touch it. Yes, but no. It's no more. <laughs> Yeah, it was a big, but well, right now... Right now, uh, there is no more. Come on, put your hands together for us. I've given my heart because I cannot breathe very well, but tonight, God is here. Yeah. You couldn't breathe very well. <laughs> okay, breathe. 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 <laughs> Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, With an attack on your throat, pain on your throat. Yeah. For how long? Uh, for almost 10 years. 10 years? <laughs> Pain on the throat? My uh, vocal cord is swollen. It's swollen. So tonight, how did you know you were healed of 10 years of vocal cord problem? Before, um, even just uh, the service is um, starting. Yes. My, my uh, throat is... It's paining you. Yeah. But right now? Pains. But right now? But right now, praise the Lord. I can shout. You can shout. Oh, I see. Can you shout? Let us see. Hallelujah! Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Take the power. Can you keep Jesus praise in this place? Wonderful man, God bless you. What did the Lord do tonight? I saw when the power of God came upon you. <laughs> God bless you. I have this dizziness problem. You have. God gave you. Quite a long time already and keep coming back. Dizziness. Yes, dizziness. And just recently when I arrived here, I don't even I don't even want to sign up to praise the Lord, worship. But Right after the prayer, the, the prayer suddenly it's gone. Yes, it's and you have been standing for a long time, so that's a proof yes. that the dizziness is gone. Can we give Jesus praise for this evening? Father, we thank you. No more dizziness in the name of Jesus, mighty warrior. <laughs> the Lord bless I saw when the power of God knocked him down. I said, Oh my God, if this man is down, <laughs> if he is down, that means this is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> because you know it is. <laughs> so what did the Lord do tonight? <laughs> For the past few weeks, um, food I've eaten has been rebelling about going down my digestive system. And when I came, when I drove here this evening, there was a severe pain, like severe wind pain. It's an embarrassing to say the testimony, I know, but... Um, I was struggling all night, and in fact, I went out during the worship time. I saw it. Yeah, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Nothing happened neither, so. <laughs> but um, after the prayer, after the prayer, the pain is gone. But one thing's quite interesting, though, because you're talking about our problems being bread. Yeah. Well, recently, I've been eating a lot of bread. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So God just took away that pain right now. I know how terrible it can be. I know how terrible. The Lord bless you. Father, we thank you for the move of your spirit upon his life. Thank you, Lord, for strength. Thank you for the renewal. Thank you, the power of the Holy Ghost. Never again will that pain come back in Jesus. Yes, my brother. Come and tell us the bread that the Lord gave you to eat tonight. Yes. I, I would say I have no pain, but it's battering me at my back. Uh, on the back. Yeah, and I I got this uh, during uh, the conference. It was not another spirit, but powerful spirit. Yes. He pushed me, and I fell yeah. flat on the floor without someone who catch me. Yes. When was that? Uh, a year ago. A year ago. Yeah. Okay. So what is what what happened to you tonight? Um, by the time you you prayed. Um, I could hardly move my... You uh, couldn't move your neck. But now I can move. And the Lord told me that... Uh, Lord told your testimony 
or you will lose it. You will lose your healing. So you now have to come to testify. Yeah, then, then uh, you confirm it that if you don't speak, you will lose. Yeah. Come on. Can you put your hands together for the Lord? He's coming and removing his neck like this. But see the power of God move upon him like he's moving right now. Thank you, Lord. Never again would the pain come back. Every sickness in this house has become bread. And they have dissolved in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, my dear sister, what did the Lord do for you? Um, I got this in direct in good order. Yeah, you got who gave you? Born in the Oh, you were born with it? What was what is it called? What tongue is that? Uh, it's, it's like um, the sickness. Yes. And inguinal hernia. Inguinal hernia. Hernia. Inguinal hernia. Hernia. Yes. These doctors, I'm telling you, they can kill you with all kinds of things yeah. if you are not careful. Yes. Yeah. For how many years? And it was, I was advised surgery. For how many years? Family. For how many years have you had this, uh, whatever name it is? Yeah. Since you were born? Yes, in born, in direct. So, how, what could you not do? And how did you know you were here? Um, I feel pain every time I do strenuous activities. Okay, so right now? Right now, um, I couldn't yet feel the pain. Because I... You couldn't feel the pain? Yeah, I couldn't feel the pain. And I hopefully I, I will not undergo an operation. Hallelujah. Church, stretch for your hands over this man. Whatever that name is, it is prayer. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, stretch for your hands over that. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it dissolves. It leaves our body. It leaves our system. It leaves our blood. It leaves our members. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We come against the oppression. Never will the oppression take place. You are here. I get an asthma problem. I suffered this uh, for, uh, I think, uh, two years. What is it? Uh, asthma. Oh, asthma. You can breathe very well. I'm not. Uh, I can't sleep too much uh, regularly in, uh, in, in the evening because of this uh, problem, asthma problem. If you start uh, praying, yes, I feel, I feel good. It's like something just lifted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can breathe very well right now. Yeah. Can you breathe? Ah. Come and give Jesus praise! So you couldn't do that before? Father God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Just wave your hand, just thank you. Wave your hand, thank you. Two years asthma, just gone like that. What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Wave your hand, give him praise in this house. 